And joining us live is Representative Adam Smith this morning. Representative Smith, good morning to you. Good morning. This is the third continuing resolution this Congress has passed. So how do we know this is the last one? Well, there's no guarantee of that, certainly. Um, the big progress that we've made at this point is that House, Senate, White House have agreed uh, to what the top line numbers should be in the appropriations bills, which basically means that the appropriators finally are now able to go to work on working out the details of exactly where that money gets spent within our 12 separate appropriations bills. So there's a decent chance, but look, there's still a lot of differences of opinion uh, between House Republicans, you know, the Senate and the White House that have to be resolved between between now and March 1st. Well, let's get into some of those differences here. You met with President Biden and other congressional leaders at the White House this week. Is there optimism about a possible deal to secure the border, which would also unlock funding for Ukraine as well? There's more optimism than there was a couple weeks ago, certainly. And I thought the meeting was very productive. And look, we had we had the leadership of the House and the Senate and the White House all in one room on all the key committees talking about this. Um, and there seemed to be widespread agreement that number one, we need to help Ukraine. You know, Putin is continuing to push to try to destroy Ukraine and push all the way to Kyiv. They need our help. And number two, we got to do something about the border. There's widespread agreement on that. Now, as they say, the devil is in the details. And the biggest impediment right now is what are the House Republicans going to insist upon on the border policy agreement? There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of agreement. Is that agreement going to be enough for House Republicans? Yeah, and speaking of that, more than 100 Republicans voted against the continuing resolution. So will there be enough Republican support, do you think, to pass a spending bill with funding for Ukraine? I, I think there will, and, and there, there are two separate bills. We're doing the appropriations bills on one side, and then there's a supplemental spending bill, which is Ukraine plus border policy. Look, the big impediment here is we have to improve border security, no doubt about it. But I hear Republicans talking about we must pass a bill that guarantees total border security. There's no such thing. Okay, we've got millions of people coming from failed states all across the world. We need to better manage that problem. But to think that there's a piece of legislation that can eliminate it, not going to happen. So I hope they don't torpedo what would be a good agreement for Ukraine and to improve border security, holding out for some sort of mythical perfect solution. All right. It's an election year, as you know, and it's likely to be President Biden against former President Donald Trump. The question a lot of people have right now is Trump pressuring House Republicans to accept a deal that he approves of and then encourage them to vote against anything that he doesn't approve of. Absolutely. Now, look, President Trump looms large over all of this. Um, House Republicans are afraid of him because they're afraid of his base. You know, there's a whole lot of House Republicans who tell me they don't agree with Trump, they think he's terrible, blah, 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 privately. <laughs> but publicly, they have to deal with the reality of his political support. And the other reality here is, you know, Trump is running for president. He doesn't want Congress and President Biden to get an agreement that helps improve policy. He wants to be able to run against, you know, President Biden for not doing any number of different things. So, yeah, he's he's going to put pressure on people to, to not do this deal. I hope they put the country ahead of those politics. And one of the people feeling that pressure, I'm sure, is House Speaker Mike Johnson right now. Is there a real chance Republicans will try to oust Johnson like they did Kevin McCarthy if he brings up Ukraine aid or something that Republicans are against here? A, I think that's highly unlikely. It's a huge move to do that, um, unprecedented, except for the one time that we just did it. Um, I think Republicans know how disruptive it is. And the other thing that a lot of people underestimate, if you, if you haven't worked in Congress, you do not know the degree of dislike that existed for Kevin McCarthy. I mean, Kevin McCarthy, regardless of your politics, you know, right, left, or center, he was unprincipled. He didn't keep his word. Uh, he was very difficult to work with. So there is there was a lot of folks who thought that we could improve from that. And look, Mike Johnson's a conservative. I don't agree with him on a lot of issues. I've worked with him on the Armed Services Committee. He's an intelligent, decent person. You know, we're going to have disagreements, uh, but he'll be honest about how he deals with us. And as a consequence, I think it unlikely uh, that the House will, will, will oust him as Speaker. All right. A lot of work cut out for folks on both sides of the aisle. Representative Adam Smith, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thanks for giving me the chance.